Gate 14 podcast. I'm Johnny Junta. I'm joined by always as by by always with Avery Chenier, Jr. How are you guys doing, boys? How are you boys doing? Good. Big weekend. We finally swept. The boys are back. Um, feels good to watch winning baseball. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's good to see some W's. A sweep, huge. Um, it seems like the offense. You know, we're mustering uh, a lot of runs at the plate, which which you love to see. Avery, is it just me or is JR high as a fucking kite right now? <laughs> is it just I'm, me? Uh, I think he's just high off allergies probably at this point. Eh? Look, guys, there's one thing you gotta know, man. I got very serious allergies. So how do you go? How do you go if you have allergies? Like, what do you do? You just I, fucking pump a, a lever or whatever the fuck those things call? No, this story of him having to go to the doctor for allergy pills is all time, too. <laughs> yeah, I, so, well, like... It goes Let's way it. back, but I've had to miss baseball games because my allergies <laughs> were that bad. What the fuck did your coach say? Listen, man, I, like to, I, I can't make it. I have fucking allergies. That is outlandish. It, it's actually an absurd thing. But like, if you look at it, like when you can't physically see, you can't play baseball. <laughs> like that's what ends up happening. Like you look so, like you think I look high, like when they act, like when they act up like very heavily, it's like it is one of the worst things ever. So I get prescribed uh, medication. <laughs> uh, these pills, <laughs> I guess it's probably just a stronger Claritin that helps. But when I don't take them, it's it's really bad. You know, yeah. we also had to miss games because of allergies last year, Jer. You know this, Mookie Betts, man, M- Mookie fucking Betts. Yeah. So you're like <laughs> the Mookie Betts of this podcast. You're like <laughs> you're you're the Mookie Betts of the pod yeah like people are wondering like did i sleep through the last episode or did i miss on purpose because of allergies a lot of people are a lot of people honestly and let me be clear here so you miss an episode and the jays just sweep a fucking series like i mean what what you you either must the jays or you help the jays when you miss an episode it's crazy but i mean yeah like i mentioned man the jays fucking sweep this team is all the way. If you win a game with that lineup they threw out there today, you can win a lineup with fucking mm-hmm. anyone. I mean, that lineup today was you're resting Vladdy and Tay Oscar before an off day. I what the fuck is Charlie Montoya saying? What, what, what was that? There's nothing you can actually say that would make sense for two of our <laughs> best players, right? Can, let's try pump your formulate... mic up. Pipe, pipe your mic sound up, by the way. Okay. Or, it just, yeah, you rest a guy. That's like telling your boss, hey, man, I know I got the week off next week, but I want the Friday <laughs> off now, too. Like, that, that's what that is. Do you think the analytics department told him that or something? Or, like, what, what in the world is the <laughs> thought b- behind that? I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you. It, that, like, when I looked at that lineup today and I saw no Vladdy, uh, because of a quote unquote like a wrist injury, they said it was, or I don't know if I believe that. And no Tay Oscar and no Jano. I'm like, oh, we're just we just don't want to sweep a series ever. Mm-hmm. Like that that's that's what was running through my mind. And this team just makes no sense, dude. Like you can't sweep three game series. You can't even sweep a fucking two game series, but you you sweep a four game series. Like what the fuck? It's actually um you're you're right with how they've played. I. Two of those games, I think we shouldn't have won, right? Like this Blue Saturday. Jays team, yeah. This Blue Jays team maybe two weeks ago loses two of those games in this series. Somehow figured it out. Uh, but Mike Trout is just absolutely incredible. It's so scary watching him come up to the plate. And I guess he was 0 for 5 today, which was nice for us. But <laughs> it's just, it's so hard. Like Mike Trout, that top of that lineup, Ward. Otani and then Mike Trout. It's like, how do you get these guys out and then to sweep a team like that? Don't hate it. I loved it. And I got another question that we got to bring up here. Is Barrios right now our worst pitcher? Seriously, like, no, it's not not even trolling or trying to be funny. He's pitched the worst. I mean, obviously, yeah, that could this series, he uh, today he was horrendous. Mm-hmm. I mean, your team puts up a six spot and you're tied. After you leave your the game and your team puts up a fucking six spot in four innings, I mean that just can't fucking happen. Barrios right now is 
one, the least consistent pitcher on this team, and two, he's the most underperforming by a legitimate landslide. I mean, Kikuchi was a fucking freak on Saturday, dude. Hit 97 from the left side. I even think he ran up to 98, too. But um, uh, I don't know what to say. Our pitching has been awesome. And then to see Barrios do this time and time again, he had two, I think, good starts in a row where we thought he'd figured it out. What he moved to a different side of the rubber, they were saying on some of the broadcasts, and that seemed to help him. But that did not help him at all today. We had talked about the numbers. The underlying numbers have been disgustingly ugly for him. So I'd say that he's probably our worst right now. Yeah. Yeah, he he needs to be better. Like, he just needs to be, I guess, like, held accountable here. Like, he's been bad, really bad. Today was another bad performance. I feel like we always go back to this. Like, he, we just can't have this. Like, he's supposed to be our ace. Um, he's, he's just supposed to be our number one, and he's – getting paid like a number one so it's it's he's got to figure things out i'm not sure if he will though because i mean we're getting into how many starts does he add now his era has to be upwards in the five right avery yeah he might be six i'll look at it right now i hope to god for his sake it's not fucking in the sixes dude Mm -hmm. the sixes oh my god i hope i hope it's not that would be no, no, no 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 not that bad He's at um, – oh, shit. You're close, Jer. 5-6-2. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. 5-6-2 ERA? So, yeah. No, that's not even, like, me chirping or me even being mean. Like, Barrios is the worst pitcher on this team right now. Like, that, yeah. that's not even me. Like, But speaking about worst pitchers on this team, we got to go into this one guy. We talked about this, text, texted about this on Saturday. The Jays have a lead. Otani, Trout, and Walsh hitting. And who does Charlie Montoyo put in the game? Julian fucking Merriweather. Was that not one of the most head scratch, mind boggling things you've ever seen? It's like, is there like a monkey in this guy's head just clapping? Like, or just playing the, like, what was your guys' thought process? Because I think we texted about, I actually texted you guys and I was like, all right, game over. Merriweather's in. Next pitch, Mike Trout new go for the center field fence. So why why you why do you put in Julian Merriweather there? That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. See, the, the thing that's odd for me, yeah, I get putting him in the game was really weird, but you look at who pitched after him in that game. Simber, who has more wins than Robbie Ray, um, Trevor Richards, <laughs> Jordan Romano, Ross Stripling. Like all these guys were available. Like your seven, I guess in a perfect world, they'll go Simber, Garcia, Romano. Um, but Trevor Richards in there. I just don't understand why he had to throw in that situation. And especially with who they were facing. I feel like Adam Simber would have been a perfect guy to put against that top of the lineup. Right. Well, and you you mentioned, yeah. And Pete Walker, like we're talking about a guy here, like Pete Walker evolved Adam Simber. I don't know if you guys saw that visual today on the broadcast, but he moved Adam Simber to literally the far right side of the mound. So his arm angle looks like he's in the fucking dugout when he's throwing. It's one of the, Craziest things. And yes, he gave up a nuke today, but man, Adam Simber, when he's carving and when his shit's moving, it is unhittable, man. I mean, today he blew it for sure. That was fucking terrible. But over Merriweather, like that's kind of a no brainer for me, right? Yep. Yep. No, he's been good. He throws behind right handers' backs pretty much since he's been moved to that side um, of the mound. It's been crazy. But like bullpen's bit was okay again. Romano, I guess, was kind of shaky when he pitched but he had the save on thursday night right so it's i we can't i can't really complain when we're gonna sweep the series yes yes and you're right about that but listen if romano's gonna throw three days in a row you can't be using these dumb dog shit excuses oh like last month or a couple weeks ago where i'm not gonna have romano go two days in a row or three days in a row like just montoyo is just the most contradicting human being i think i've ever fucking seen it's like and romano's Velo was substantially fucking down. I don't know if you guys saw that. Mm-hmm. His Velo was holy shit. I mean, and and the craziest thing is, is like you put in fucking raw stripling to close the game. Like that was I was I honestly thought the Jays were wrapped up when that when when raw stripling came in in that situation. But I mean, I, I seriously thought we were fucked when when raw stripling comes in. I believe it was base load. Is that correct? Or first and second? I'm not gonna lie, I fell asleep last. I night. think are you are. Uh, it's all right. I make sense. I'd fall asleep <laughs> during the best game of the series too. But this Sunday game, 
like the game today, that was must watch. Don't leave your couch ever baseball game. That was the most electric fucking game I've ever seen besides the home opener of this year. And uh, our King Lourdes is back, by the way. So back. You tweeted that. So, so back. His um his career, like OPS by month, is absurd. I'm going to find the numbers for it. But he is the worst hitter in baseball the first two months and gets extremely hot June, July, and August. <laughs> like, it, I remember looking at it last year, and it's out of control. So I'm going to look up his stats by month. But five RBIs today. Bo has figured it out again. Vladdy, they wrote a whole article on MLB about how he's not hitting home runs. And then that day, he fucking smoked one off the foul pole, right? Yeah. And it's just like, he's so good. But he finally got a pitch up. They've been pitching him down totally. But I think it was just a really good series. Do you like watching games at that park? I think they're awesome. I think it's fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. I love Angel Stadium, whatever the fuck it's called, man. That that stadium just gets me going. Like the fucking backdrop, like the the. And in my mind, I'll always just when I'm watching a game at Angel Stadium, I can ne- or whatever it's called. I never want to watch a game there and not see Mike Trout roam center field. Like that's mm-hmm. in my mind. That's just the I, when they pan the camera, I see Mike Trout in center every single time and that's what makes that stadium even more beautiful for me i fucking love that field okay let's go lourdes goriel average by month sorry gerald get back to you it's, so it's okay there bud <laughs> march and april 243 <laughs> may 234 in june he's hitting 325 in july he's hitting 302 and then september he hits 307 oh my god so he's been a streaky hitter his whole career. It's up and down, up and down all the time. But I think we're going to get up for a little bit, boys, and he can carry this offense for a couple weeks. Fuck, that's incredible. That's like a – I wouldn't even b- bother even playing him then in April or May. Just <laughs> fucking let him play June June to the rest of the year. Just leave him in Dunedin. L- leave him against the low-A fucking pitchers for a little bit. Then he'll just go up against the big guys when he's ready to go in June. I think it's a genius idea. Charlie Montoya wouldn't be able to come up with that, but no, he was on this podcast. He might hire you if you bring that up to him. <laughs> Analytic guy, a- Avery, you better you better clip that. You'll, you'll be working for the Toronto Blue Jays front office soon. If you you fucking clip that. I that is like that's crazy. I like just he hates hitting in April and May when you realistically like when everyone's kind of struggling. He is like really struggling. And man, Tay Oscar has been struggling, struggling, bro. Yeah, holy. Fuck, he's hitting 160, right? It's, uh, it was like 169 when he came up today. That's this bad. isn't good for him. Like, this is a contract year for him, right? Hear me out. I think this helps the Jays if he does this, though, because they could sign him for substantially less if yeah, he just puts like, up numbers like this. But it's a it's a two way street because I want him to be raking because I want to win the World Series. So it's like, mm-hmm. what do we do here? You We're going to need him. We're definitely going to need him. But this isn't good for him, especially for a guy who I guess, like, I don't know, I guess teams might not see, like, like what he did before as, like, something he could do every year. But, like, this is a guy who could produce – how many – I'm pretty sure he had over 110 RBIs last year. I love him, though, when he's good, And he was dude. itching three uh, a 300 average last year. So, um we're gonna need him year. but is it, he's not helping this case right now he's got to find a groove he's he does to be fair he had 550 at bats last year he only has 87 so far this year yeah it's a small sample size he can turn it on but it's such a deep hill to dig it's such a deep hole to dig out of when you're hitting not bad right now like very bad he like he's gonna have to go hit like 400 the rest of the year i'm not a math guy to hit like close to 300 this year right i've mm-hmm. I don't know if that that might be substantially off. Like that might be way off. That <laughs> Sounds like not, it could work out. It could definitely work <laughs> out. But and uh, I just want to give a a massive shout out to my guy Avery Shenye, who absolutely fucking dented my wallet this weekend. Um, he looked me in the eye, not really through text and through Twitter, that the Colorado Rockies were the biggest lock since oh my God. fucking. I don't even know, like, the biggest lock since the Tampa Bay Lightning to win the series against the Leafs. And I'm looking, I'm watching this fucking game, and these guys are swinging fucking swords against the Washington Nationals <laughs> or whoever the fuck they were playing. And I'll be honest, the verbal abuse was going to be close. You, you are so confident in a pick like that 
I want you to explain yourself what happened because that was fucking uh, just a horrendous display. I think they were down five one in like the sit in the fifth. It was four nothing right away. Yep. Four, yeah, literally first inning. <laughs> first inning four nothing. Um. Okay. So, as an analytic guy, I use it for gambling as well. The Colorado Rockies statistically are the second best offense in baseball. Advanced statistics against left-handed pitching. <laughs> okay. So. It was the right process, but the wrong team in this situation. I'll say that. So next, I had my game of the year the next day because I needed it to make up for the Rockies. It smashed, of course. The Guardians against the Rays. Oh, no, no. That game got rained out. But same pitchers next day. It was still game of the year. Winner. <laughs> did you tweet, though, that you're still on it? I don't know if he did. Uh, no, I told T-Mac no, that didn't. I'm so not it's, taking uh, it. Yeah, JR, no. do we count it as a winner then? I, no, in my mind, no. I count it as I'm a winner. I'm saying the process was right for those pitchers, right? The it issue, though, out. here is you need – because you missed your game of the year, you need to now I've hit had three, like I had four three game of the years last week, yeah. Okay. You're going to need to hit like four in a row for someone to trust you, like Johnny, to trust you again. No, well, no, no, no. He doesn't, no, have no. To hit, he doesn't have to hit one. To, he doesn't have to hit one for me to trust him because I jumped immediately in the fucking foxhole with him on Saturday when he said it has to be the Cardinals or no, the, no, no, uh, Angel, Angels. the Angels. Has to be the Angels. And next thing I know, fucking Archie Bradley, who is the worst <laughs> pitcher in baseball, just absolutely skull fucks it. So, I, yeah, so I would take well, that. I'm bet. on a break. Um, I'm on a break for the Shenye rides. It's okay, guys. Um, it'll work out one day. I did say I would climb the whole Rocky Mountain range if the Rockies lost. That was my <laughs> well, that's just an outlandish thing to say. <laughs> and then yeah. I was kind of looking it up and I realized how fucking big the Rocky Mountains are. Holy shit. Yeah, but, it's not a joke. No, that I mean, visual I, is absurd. I lived like three hours for there for two years, you know. I got I know uh, that was the craziest tweet, and that wasn't even the dumbest one. The dumbest one was you guaranteeing the Rockies. That was the dumbest <laughs> yeah. tweet. You you scaling the fucking Rocky Mountains wasn't your dumbest tweet of the weekend. That the the fucking Rockies one was, but that's fine. We bounced back. Um, I actually it got the people going, man. It got, it got, it the, got people the people going. going. I wonder how many. I wonder if we can calculate how much money you lost, people, on that pick. It has to be a, a just absurd. Number. I also got a text from someone saying they know a tour guide in the Rocky Mountains, like in Colorado. So yeah. they, can, they do twelve hour hikes. So I'm gonna have to get connected with that guy and uh, get going. But talk about getting the people going. We had a nice little fight in the TikTok comments between. If you see someone commenting on TikTok, just know it's Johnny, and. <laughs> It's Johnny every time. Like I'll, I'll kind of like look back on TikTok if we post something because I'll do the clips and then like send them to you guys and Johnny will post them and I'll see who's commenting. And Johnny, like you'll see a comment 10 seconds from someone. Johnny, three seconds ago, has commented already. Every single fucking time. I live in the mud. <laughs> and this is a special shout out to the most cringeworthy piece of garbage 60-year-old on fucking TikTok. I'm not age shaming. Craig Ballard. I mean, and let me go into this argument. So I, we post a clip of that. I say like my, my blood was boiling when Alec Manoa wasn't ranked in the top five for pitchers, which is a, a decent point to make. And he said, tell me you don't watch baseball. So I said, <laughs> tell me you don't watch baseball. I'll tell me you don't watch baseball. I was like, is that a shot at us? I thought he was joking. He's like, yeah, it's hundred percent a shot. And then I just responded, get the fuck out of our comments, Craig, and keep making your dog shit content. That's all I said. And then he just kept going and going. And he's like, uh, Alec Manoa. So then I said to him, so Alec Manoa, in your mind, is not a top five pitcher. He said, no, I didn't say that. Are you fucking stupid, Craig Ballard? What do you mean? Like, that's exactly what you said. And I said, he's better than Pablo Lopez. As of right, obviously, stat-wise, he, is. he has better stats than him in majority of the stats. So I said that. And, um, yeah, so he was just like, so I said, so let me get this straight. If you have a 1-6 ERA, you are not classified as a top five pitcher, mm -hmm. according to Craig Ballard. No, I didn't say that. Then what the fuck did you say? Then then what are you talking? Like, that's the whole point of this fucking clip, you stupid fuck. Like, just go back to your dog shit TikTok with the weird ass scale. Like, half of the screen is black. He has no understanding about proportions and fucking I TikTok. It's the one thing that really pisses me off about all his stuff. He can't make a full screen picture in the background. It infuriates me. It is 
and that's just, I mean, he's, he literally, he watched the Jays when they, like, probably in the 1980s when they started, right? So he knows more than me just based off of in, in his mind. It's just, it's, dude, do you know I have another podcast with guys that you probably jerk off on your TikTok, you stupid fuck? Like, I was so, my, bl- I was pacing around the house. Like, my blood was <laughs> boiling. Like, I wanted to find this guy's IP and just go toe-to-toe with him because I was so fucking mad. I was like, you're going to tell me. I don't know baseball. It's literally all I do is I just watch baseball all fucking day. Like it was one of the craziest things. And like for me to say Alec Manoa is a top five pitcher, it makes my blood boil when people don't rank him as that. How does that, how is that even like an outlandish take? Like that's just a normal take of a Jays fan who watches him every five days. Right. Was I, was I, and you guys can maybe answer this. Cause obviously I was coming at it with a heated head. Was I that out of line to even say that? No, I think he's no. so young that people won't give him his dues there, which is fine. But as a Jays f- fan of the team, you sh- I think you should be on that side and it shouldn't be that crazy. I do think there's probably like maybe 10 guys better than him, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. But for what Ben Verlander was doing right there, like Pablo Lopez is hurt, I'm pretty sure. And he has a what, worse ERA oh. than Sandy Alcantara. Like, I don't what, know how. What the fuck was that guy doing? Like, that was... That's Sandy O'Connor was the best pitcher on that team. Oh, like not even. Yeah. And it's not, even, it's not fan. even remotely close, too. Like, it's literally like it's not even remotely close. And another thing that really, really gets under my skin with this Craig Ballard guy, I was creeping his TikTok, just kind of going in on it. He has some of the worst nickname awareness I've ever seen. He calls Vladdy Slim Thick Daddy Vladdy. <laughs> what? In no. The, imagine a 60 year old man saying that about a 21 year old. Like, that's what he calls Vladdy. Slim, da- whatever. Slim, thick, Vladdy, daddy. What the fuck is that, dude? What? When I heard that, I was like, what? And then he's stroking off Alec Manoa the day after he was roasting him on our TikToks. It's like, pick a fucking side, man. Howie Mandel, for fuck's sakes. I think it's crazy. <laughs> I, he is public enemy number one. That's it. He's yeah. public enemy did number one. You, did you That's invite it. him on the podcast? No, I will never invite I will never. And he you should get he, his shine. You, 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 you could tell he was like obviously. I think in my mind, kind of clout chasing. He sees the podcast is buzzing, like how rapidly we're growing. Like I, no, I'm not. It's not even a job. Like seriously, yeah. how uh-huh. quick we're growing on TikTok, and he gets like 400 views a video now or whatever it is. Like he's not. He's kind of regressed. So he's trying to clout chase. Like, and I just deleted his comments. Like I screenshot it obviously for future reference when Manoa wins a Cy Young. <laughs> but I deleted his comment. I don't want people seeing that fuck on our TikTok page. And that's what yeah. I said to him. Get the fuck off our TikTok page. That's what I said. <laughs> we so need that, that's my rant. This. That's hey, my rant. You, you got to think of a meme, Johnny and TikTok <laughs> uh, commentator. No, no, I already have one. I, as he was talking, I so okay. Sheck, Sheck West has an album called Mud Boy. And I was just <laughs> going to replace the picture of Sheck West and put Johnny's face on there. I, I live in the mud and I and if you are a troll on TikTok, um, if you are a troll on TikTok trying to chirp us in the comments and there is someone answering, just know it's me knocking on your fucking door. Um, it's me knocking on the door, wanting to get in the mud and I live it. I love it. I live it. I need it. It's something that I crave and it's incredible. And I don't care if you have two followers, a thousand followers, I'm coming at you. And that's what I do. And uh, that, 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 that's about sums it up. And I also went live on TikTok, by the way, uh, before Saturday's game. I might be doing that more often before games. And it is the most electric fucking atmosphere of all time. You just, But one thing is you have just a shit ton of these people that try to go live with you. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, these guys must follow us. They're going live. I'm a fan of the no. show. I was on live with, with like a Serbian dude, and I was just verbally abusing him. Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, you don't even follow us. I didn't realize. I wish I had a little bit of like a PSA before I went live, and I if, knew that because I would have asked accepted. us. We would have been able to tell you that. <laughs> I was accepting <laughs> motherfuckers in the live. Like it was so you thought these guys were fans, and they were just absolute randos, and you were giving them shit to get the fuck out. <laughs> it was one. It was one dude. He was like Russian. He was like in his car. And I was like, are you a listener? Like, do you know what this is? And he's like, and then I pretended I was like, give me a second. I was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Kicked him out. And then I was like, get that motherfucker out. I was like, I was kicking motherfuckers out like Angel Hernandez. I was just, you're done. You're done. You're done. I was just having a field day of kicking dudes out. So, yeah. The hardest part on TikTok Live was trying 
for me was trying to figure out how to kick those guys off. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Talking. That's, that's a great great point. so hard. Fans great... won't be able to join those lives because you need a thousand followers to join someone else's live. So that's, that's the issue with yeah. uh, TikTok lives. Kind of dumb the way they do that because like you, a podcast could have their fans join easily yeah. on there, but it makes no sense. And speaking of something that's incredible, this is completely off topic. How fucking incredible. How fun is it to watch Starling Marte? This is way off topic. He just hit a game tying nuke with two outs in the bottom of the nine. Mm-hmm. I'm just bringing that up. How fucking awesome is Starling Marte? I mean, I would, I would die to have a guy like that in the Jays. Just a fucking balls to the wall type of guy. I love Starling Marte. Completely off topic, but you, I feel like you watch a lot of Mets games, don't you? Yeah, I, I love you... watching the Mets. I love watching the Mets. I love them because it's one of the games where it could start out like zero zero seven innings in. And then just both bullpens are going to like decide who like who can fuck this up more. <laughs> and the Mets bullpen just did that. They they blew the lead in the eighth, gave up a three run nuke. And what happens? Bottom of the ninth, Starling Marte game tying home run. It's the most electric games of all time. It really I, I love watching the Mets play. Uh, I, I compare them to the Jays a little bit, man. Honestly, pretty good pitching rotation. Um, their offense kind of like the Jays, too. I mean, you got to like. You got a pretty good average guys, guys that hit for power, and Pete Alonso is a fucking freak. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. Do you remember when he almost got killed in spring training? The yeah, but picture the, of his the, truck. The flipping of the truck. Yeah. And speaking of obviously National League, we got to talk about this one guy that's been bringing up a ton of uh, interest from Jay's beat writers. My dear friend of the, of the official, official podcast, David Bednar. Whole, if the Toronto Blue Jays get Bedsy, that would be fucking unbelievable. Imagine Bednar and Romano back to back eight nine. Holy fuck! Who would you have closing games? Romano, I think Romano, mm-hmm. but it, it it helps out Romano and like minimizes the risk on his arm when you have a guy like David fucking Bednar coming out of the bullpen. I can't say I know much at all about him. And that's just because he plays for the Pirates. I know he's good though. No, he's nasty man. And another guy, I think. Who else? I'm trying to think who else was brought up. Get but- up. Yeah, that would be a, a big ad. I think we're gonna have a huge ad to that bullpen at some point. Have to. You know, you know mm-hmm. how much you know how much fucking strain has been in those guys' arms? It yeah. seems like they throw it we go to the bullpen after every fucking sixth inning or fifth inning every game. I've seen Yimmy go I've seen Jimmy Garcia pitch, it seems like since I was twelve years old, watching this motherfucker pitch for the Blue Jays. <sighs> he is in every game, it feels like. Mm-hmm. And same with Simber, man. <laughs> That the way Simber throws, that can't be good for the arm, man. No, <laughs> no shot. That uh, and this series being four games, it just felt like we had been playing forever. It felt so long. It, I was saying that like we just lost what happened on Thursday because it was so long ago. It feels like, um, yeah. But we've just overworked that pen a lot. But we have a dumbass in Charlie Montoyo that. We have a chance to save the guys for a game with um, Alec Manoa a couple like last week, and we take him out. So yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Poor on Everyone that. has lost faith in uh, Mon- Montoya. It's uh, it's shitty. We asked like someone at our baseball team, good old Georgetown Goats. I know someone gave us a shout out um, in the comments. We're buzzing right now. Um, but uh, Johnny. Uh, if you ever want to get back into baseball, we could consider you. You know what? Team, I, I, but... I considered it. I went to the I went to an IBL game. Um, yeah, well, um you just <laughs> why did you, you just go walk, to went to a game? Well, it's like 10 minutes for me. It's in Guelph, and uh I no, your boy though. Yeah, right? Connor Morrow and all those guys are playing. Actually, finish what you were saying and I'll, I'll explain the story. So what were you saying about the the go- the goats or whatever you're talking so, about? So uh there was a couple guys on the team who were just like, fuck Charlie, like he he's gotta go, right? Like, and it just shows you like it, like everyone is just thinking the same thing here. Like he's just not the manager for the Jays to win a World Series. I think he's not. <laughs> he's really not. And and I don't know what it's gonna take because it's tough. Because like the guys could be playing well and he won't get fired. Like probably not. Like let's be honest. So it's shitty that like the guys have to play like shit for Charlie to get fired. It's the only way. Like how are they going to fire him if they're doing well? Unless they go Vegas Golden Knights with Gerard Gallant yeah. first place at the All-Star break or whatever and just shit can. I'm like, that yeah. is like that. I The Jays don't have the balls to do that, obviously, which is kind of fucking bullshit because if the Jays are not reaching their, like, let's say they're in second, right, in the AL East, and you know at the back of your mind, you're like, they're not reaching their full potential. You got to shit can that guy, man. Like, you got to bring mm-hmm. in a guy that can do that for you. So 
I don't know. And by the way, yeah, like I said, I was at the IBL game um, on Saturday, I believe it was. And there is, like, some players in that league. Like, there's Dominicans in there, like, that used to play pro ball. And I'm like, if this guy played pro ball, I should be in AAA right now. Like, there was this one kid that was hitting, and he was so early, like, unbelievably early on every pitch. And they're like, yeah, he played pro ball. And he went, like, 0 for 5 against a guy throwing, like, 78. I'm like this league is in shambles. Like the guys that play in that league for fun and just like fuck around, like just like to like to hit nukes. It's like, all right. But the guys that play in that league and like are signing autographs post game and like fucking talking to fans, stuff like that, like thinking they're big shit. Like what the fuck are you like? You're in the IBL dude. You're playing guys that played Coba baseball, like OBA baseball. What league are you guys in? Do you guys play like a Brampton team or whatever? No, we, we just play it. It's like uh it's called the GHBL. It's like a, it's like a men's league that's like you're still, still playing travel. ball a little bit. Yeah. yeah, like you travel to like Burlington, but we don't play as much. So it's like beers in the parking lot after the game type thing. Oh, you know what? No, I won't. No, I, I, I don't think I could ever fucking strap on a uniform again. Yeah, I, you I, could, man. I'm we you would it. actually, you would we actually play this fall, tournament like... in Peterborough, August long weekend. That is absolutely electric. I think we'd uh-huh. love to have you there. Should I make yeah. it out there? Should I make it <laughs> out no, and play baseball? And just like... you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna make this must watch. That will be the last time I ever step on it. Like that is the farewell, <laughs> Derek Jeter. The Derek Jeter farewell tour. That it will be the last time I ever step foot on a baseball field because I got out the wrong way. Like my last two at bats in college were 88 to the rib cage. Like I got hit both of my last at bats in my sophomore season. So that would be a funny farewell, but like, how hard are the guys throwing in this league? Oh, like, can I this, turn on them? Yeah. In this, so in our league, like league league, like you're seeing like shitty pitching, <laughs> but in this Peter Road tournament, there's like a couple guys who can get up to like mid to high eighties. We saw a guy who was Arizona State. He came in and closed the game out against us. How the <laughs> fuck are you here? <laughs> See, that's a but, guy where I'm trying to play mental warfare, and I'm stepping up to the mound. I'm like. Dude, you're a fucking loser throwing this hard in men's league. Like, I, my goal for that Peter Road tournament is, is if someone tries to like get under our skin or try to do something, I want to get in one. Like, I, I, not like maybe not a, like a physical fight, but I want to get in like a screaming match with someone yeah, where no, it's like, yeah. there. you're going to be like, I'll be honest, Johnny, like your first AB, you're going to be fucking nervous as shit, man. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I will not. I seriously, I, I don't have the personality to do that. The only thing that I'll be nervous about that first that bat or just like kind of hesitant about is the idea of me fucking like just being laid on like 62. Like where I'm like, oh my fucking gosh. It's- I fell off this bad where I'm laid on 62. Like that's where I'm a little bit scared of where I'll get hum- Maybe someone has a camera there and records it and it makes the fish in official rounds. And some of my big league friends are like, I'm never coming on this podcast again. <laughs> that's the only thing I can see. Like, all right, that is nightmare fuel. So we'll see. I mean, I mean that- if you, if you go up to the plate and you put one over the fence, those I'm, boys I'm not, are going to be, I'm not having another at bat. If I've, I've, had home run, not- I've hit home runs there, it's very home run. friendly. Yeah. You hard. could, you could put one out. If I and do the that, umpire if, if sits launch- in a, sits in a pool between games like a little mini pool and the mvp of the game you get these huge king can be it's an all-time tournament you yeah, know they i used actually to do, they used to shotgun you get me a jersey you get you get me a jersey i will be there i will be at that tournament <laughs> you know what that is as enticing because listen i was thinking like after watching the ibl game like just to kind of be in like the locker room with the boys like i was thinking of just fucking around playing for like brantford but i looked at the schedule and i'm like no fucking shot like friday saturday sunday they have games um, if this Lee, I mean, I will just, this will be my farewell tour. Like we'll have a, like, it'll be the Johnny Jr. the farewell tour. Like, cause I didn't get, like I said, I didn't get a farewell at Lamar community mm-hmm. college. So when I went, like that was my last game at Lamar community college. So that's a great point. I mean, if I launch my first at bat though, you, <laughs> I just want you to know, I will not show up for the, I, we only you, play one day. I'm pretty like two days, the Saturday and the Sunday. <laughs> yeah. We go out Friday, like very heavily at the bar. <laughs> That sounds like my fucking dream. I, I might be in. Well, I, I, th- I think I am in, but that's fine. Um, I, I mean, we should go back to Blue Jays baseball here, except fucking talking, telling me to close the yearbook on baseball. But, um, I got to go into, I mean, Kevin Biggio, I kind of got to eat my words. He had some pretty fucking good at bats this weekend. Maybe he was injured. 
But you got to do it jo- like today. Like you got to do a job, dude. Like you got to do a job. He's just loading no outs. Like do your that job. That was bad. That was bad. But he started a rally mm-hmm. after that. Yeah. So, no, he definitely looked better than than what he did previously. But I don't know. We'll have to see more here. Maybe the, barrel, the next two series. The barrel last night um, to right field that went out for the ground rule double. I was like, holy fuck. That was, like, it was a great swing. So I we will. Like as much shit as we talk on Kevin Biggio, we want him to be good. Like I just yeah. want people to know we, that yeah. we want. We need, need a lefty bat. We need a solid lefty bat. Yeah. No, we need lefty bat really bad. But yeah, I I do think it's like it makes a massive difference. And this is another thing that's off topic that I got to mention because we got before we cut to the next half of this interview or uh, podcast. People listening to this that have air conditioning in their car, um, I just want our heat. I just want you to realize how lucky you are if you're listening to this in your car crank the ac roll the windows up and just enjoy the ac i was in my car today it was 33 degrees no ac i was driving 30 40 over the speed limit just to get a windshield into my vehicle so i could feel just a smidge of cold air like just a smidge of like wind so if you're listening to this Never take for granted what it's like to have just functioning air conditioning in your vehicle. You said you were going to get that fixed. <laughs> I know. I like maybe this week I'll get it fixed, but every auto body shop I've called is like, yeah, we can't get you for like two weeks. Like, fuck. So I just, I don't know what to do, man. But if you're listening to this, um, just never take it for granted because you can never know when one day your AC just doesn't work and it's just unbelievably fucking warm. Or your heat doesn't work, and you're driving your podcast co-host to a Blue Jays game, <laughs> and you're wiping the windshield with a fucking T-shirt so you could see out of it. So yeah, that's that's the moral. That's the moral of this episode is don't take AC for granted. I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> I <laughs> it's just the first time I get in your car and it is torrential downpour and you are wiping it with the shirt. We the made shirt. it we made it in one piece, man. That's something how I'll you, never forget. That's how you can tell what a <laughs> That's like if they do a documentary on me when this blows up and the official official podcast blows up and they interview you. That's going to be like the first time I met Johnny, his car had no fucking heat. And, and he'll be we driving were, a Lamborghini and it'll and be like, we, look how far he's come. And, and look how far he's come now. <laughs> now he's driving a Ford Escape 2017. Oh, yeah. Avery, by the way, uh, I don't know if you noticed this last podcast, and this is like maybe we could get a hashtag thank you, Avery, in the chat for this guy grinding at like 12 p.m. just making clips and shit. Um, you left the funny part. Of, so I watched the YouTube video because someone DM'd me saying like the ending of that podcast was hilarious. So there's a clip like right at the end, right when we end, like we're like, all right, that's it. All you hear at the end is like, yo, are you hopping on COD? Like just like an Avery moment where he's like he couldn't cut the last three seconds. Like he was just so dialed in and tired. He just forgot to clip the last three seconds where it says, yo, are you hopping on COD? And then boom, podcast ends. I didn't realize I fucking <laughs> did that. God, it was, it was a wild I, I bet on the – um because what happened was I had fucked up the premiere, the premiere profile where I – I bet for the uh, pod, like regular listeners, I cut it normally, and then I something had fucked up, and it was way too late, and I was cutting this up, and I guess yeah, I just yeah. fucking forgot. Yeah, no, that was just a hilarious, uh, <laughs> just a hilarious moment out of you, just absolutely incredible shit. Um, but yeah, so we'll 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 end it off here with the White Sox series. Obviously, the White Sox, and I tweeted this today. Watching the White Sox play baseball should be a capital, like it should be a crime, like just to be like to force to watch their games. And obviously, it was a re- I do a reverse jinx thing where I jinx people, I uh, jinx teams, and they come back and win. That happened to work again today because I had the White Sox, so it's just I'm gonna keep the ball rolling. But Dallas Keuchel DFA'd. I mean, holy fuck! If I would have told you that like three years ago that Dallas Keuchel would get DFA'd, you'd be you'd slap me in the fucking face. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a wild thing? He had an ADRA, just absolutely dog shit all year. What he was an automatic fade, so I'm gonna I'm going to miss fading Dallas Keuchel. That is a thing that I'm that's just like it's the greatest thing ever. And now we're not gonna be able to do it anymore. I'm uh, I'm gonna look up his baseball savant page because I bet it's probably better than Jose Barrios. Is it? I don't know. He was man. so it's crazy because he was so good. 
Like he was so disgusting. good. Disgusting. Dude, if you you want to talk about a pitching match, I'm looking at the pitching matchups for these series. Tuesday, you got Kevin Gossman versus Lucas Giolito. Sign me the fuck up for that game, dude. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do we the White Sox, um, yeah, won't. Uh, oh, Dylan Lynn... C's pitch today. Dylan C's pitch today. Oh, nice. Will um, Lance so Lynn be throwing? Maybe game three, but it's Copac game two. Oh, he's been fucking Giolito. Fuck, it's a tough, it's a tough series, man. And listen, like the White Sox, like I said, are dog shit and absolutely terrible. But that series is kind. I mean, that those pitching matchups are a fucking nightmare. You got Giolito, and then Michael Kopech, who throws like ninety eight mile an hour, like sinkers or what? It, I don't know what it is, but he's gross too. So it's not going to be easy this year. It's no. not going to be easy. Their offense is absolutely dog shit. You got Josh Harrison hitting in the two hole. Luis Robert has COVID too, I think. So hopefully he's out. We or, should. Uh, it'll be interesting. Like these are some really good pitchers, some of the best in the majors. I mean, this rotation is, it's up there. It's probably top three, I'd say. Like yeah. with how good Kopech's been. I'd agree with um, that. Mm-hmm. They're three so, rival any any three in baseball for sure. Yes. And Lance Lynn hasn't even thrown a pitch this year. So like Dylan Cease is obviously having a, a very good se- a breakout season right yeah. now, which everyone was like predicting at every for the last goddamn two years, I think. And now we're finally seeing it. But uh, no, it'll be cool. I mean, like you said, though, their their offense has really been struggling with an offense that a lot of people thought was going to be like a powerhouse. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. I forgot about this. We have Reese McGuire coming back in the building. Oh, uh, should we like make thank you Reese shirts and go to so. a game? I think so. Hashtag thank you Reese. <laughs> like, if he gets a video, no, he's not gonna get a video montage. Do you think people give him a clap, like a little standing no. go clap? No, no right? No. no, I think they will. No, no, I will <sighs> clap for Joey. Okay, Potter. okay, maybe it'll be like, oh, it's Reese, and then they'll <laughs> clap type thing. He's terrible, by the way. He is so bad. I was watching him today, but the Jays lost that trade. The Jays lost a trade with a guy hitting 195 or whatever the fuck he's hitting. Like the Jays lost that trade because Zach Collins in triple A. Yeah. The Jays lost the trade. The Jays lost the trade with a guy that's hitting below 200, below the Mendoza line. The Jays lost the trade. I mean, it's yeah. Zach Collins should have came on our pod. I mean, that was just a really no, he bad knew what he, he fucked up. That's on him. That's mm-hmm. on him. He knew. He knew the re- the repercussions of not coming on this podcast. Mm-hmm. But there's one guy that's actually breaking out. And I'm saying this not to be biased because he's my guy. Jake Berger has been a freak this year. Have you guys looked at his stats? He walked it off again today. Is he the Missouri State guy? Yes. Yes. I believe a- if one of you guys come to the game with me this week, you guys will meet him. I think I'm. Um, uh, I think. Uh, What's it called? I think either, yeah, I think he's going to send me tickets or whatever like that, and then dinner after the game or something. I don't know what we're doing, but um, he's a fucking, he's a beauty, dude. He just looks like the common man that happens to hit fucking nukes. Do you know out of the, out of the, out of, I think the top, I think it was the top five furthest home runs for the White Sox this year. He's had three of them, and he's only been up for like, he he keeps going up and down. Yeah, it's a wild. at bats right now. Yeah, it's the crazy, I mean, He's good, man, but, I mean, that lineup is terrible. The only guy that I really, really like in that lineup, and I'll always love him because he packs absolute hammers, is is Jose Abreu, right? I mean, Jose Abreu is that guy. He's a freak. He's also 50 yeah. years old, right? No. I mean, I'm pretty sure they talked about him faking his age. I hope for his sake. And listen, this we're not the fake news media, but I pray to God that's that's not true. At least not Miguel Tejada-ing, Tejada-ing us or whatever the fuck that is. Are you sure? I th- I thought there was a big thing on that um, before. I'll look it up here, but I think it's kind of electric when people just fake their age. It is sick. And well, I, I'm actually under a conspiracy that Wander Franco is faking his age. You guys heard that conspiracy? Oh, we were we talked about that. We talked about that. Didn't we talk about that on this podcast? I don't think we did, but his brother's name is Wander Franco. And his yeah, we, we talked about that. Franco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's faking and, his age. And I respect and his son's that. His name is Wander Franco. It's a crazy hustle. It's a crazy thing to do. But at some point, you got to just tip your cap and be like, I respect that hustle. Right? Yeah. So, he's a grown man. He's a, he's grown, a grown man. man. He's a grown man. With braces, but, though. So yeah. are we saying, what are we saying here? What's the predictions? Because um, 
I think I called Vladi Nuke this weekend. I could be wrong on that. Um, but I did call that. And uh, you guys and my and JR, did you happen to hear the JR impression? Uh, <laughs> Jeremy? Did you guys do this last week when I was yeah. missing? Yeah, I gave your prediction for the series. I said, um, I said that, what did I say? I said the series was going to be 3 1 Angel or 3 1 Jays in your voice. But okay. I, I, I'm not going to do the voice again. You have to listen to it because I want to get your immediate reaction on it. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm saying the I'm saying the Jays take two or three. Is that crazy to say, or are they going to get go lose two or three? Like I, you don't know what this. No. Team. I like sweep. I like two out of three. I think they stay hot. A sweep would be really good, but I think just one of those games, those pitchers just pitches lights out for sure. So I think two out of three is safe here for the Jays. I think we get super hot and it's a sweep. Wow. A sweep. Whoa yeah. there, Shen. <laughs> I mean, Seriously? Yeah. Oh, this and listen for the people listening, this is coming from the guy who said in the red series there'd be two games over ten runs. <laughs> so let's be fucking clear. Not all, I don't always have to be right. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Sweep the Jays the, the Jays haven't lost a series in a while though, eh boys? Oh, don't say yeah. it. We said this last time, and they oh, immediately no. went on to lose. No, every but series. no, no. You got to take in the JR effect. JR is not in the Dominican, right? Yeah, JR. Yeah, I'm not in the Dominican. So when was the last time the Jays lost a series? That was to the Rays at the May 13th, 14th, 15th. So wow, that's actually that'll play. That'll Two definitely weeks. fucking play. Yep. I think we sweep. I'm talking myself into it. I can respect that. Listen, I, 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 if you're going to put your balls on the table like that, I will say, like, the Jays are going to sweep. Sure. We'll say the Jays are going to sweep. I, I'm going to agree with you on that. Fuck it. Jays are going to sweep. It. But anyways, like, this this whole lineup and the re- the re- like the resurgence of Danny Jansen has just been incredible. I mean, the guy, I think he has the Jays record for most home runs in the first 12 games. He has fucking four, right? Or six, or what is it? Four. He has four. Look that up. I've I've heard a bunch of stats from him, and I, they all get jumbled in my brain. But he's been awesome again. Just every yeah. time we need a clutch home run, it seems like it's been from him. And he doesn't play half the games because I don't know why. Yeah, no idea why. No idea why. But I'm excited for this week's series. And I know I say that all the time, but I just love seeing two good teams going at it. Like the White Sox, yes, they're you could say they're kind of garbage and stuff like that. But when you look at the names on that roster. In my mind, they're good. You know, when you got Jose Abreu, mm-hmm. but Tim Anderson, Tim Anderson. Well, Tim Anderson actually got injured today. He got taken out of the game in like the sixth. Awesome. Um, so I, I, I don't know if he's going to be playing, but I'm going to say bold prediction here. Lorda stays hot, hit 600 this series. I'm saying I'm going to say Lord because, you know, like Lorda, he he mashes against pitchers where he has ideally no business mashing. Right. Mm-hmm. Like these freaks. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Lourdes goes off at 600, and uh, what's it called? And Vladdy puts on a fucking clinic too. I just I, I love watching Vladdy play against these guys, man, and I love watching Vladdy go up against Giolito. And Giolito, by the way, is a freak. I might have to go to that game on Tuesday just to kind of watch the Gossman Giolito masterclass because that's gonna be must watch TV. I need to see that. It's all time that his high school baseball coach is now the pitching coach too. Really? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So uh, Katz or something is his last name. They always talk about how they were all teammates, right? Um, yeah, that, that's, a clip that, that's a clip that's brought up five million times. Yo, do you know that he, Giolito went to high school with, I forgot who they, Walker Bueller, whoever the fuck. It was, it was Max Freed for sure. And then another. It's one. Freed, Flaherty. Yeah. 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 Because they go to each other's. They were, they were at the uh, playoff game there. Harvard yeah. Westlake is the Washington high school freak. we went to. Harvard Westlake, yeah, because um, yeah, they always produce freaks in nature, though. That's a that's a great school. But, anyways, well, any last things for you guys to say? I mean, I I'm gonna have to go to a Jays game in full uniform, but I'm should I wait till June 9th? Like, yeah. what should I do here? Like, should we go after the June 9th just to see where our followers are at? Because we're close. We're not really mm-hmm. close to 1500, but a couple more clips like from this episode might do it. Like, are gonna clo- get us close to it. Um, maybe actually clip this. So first of all, we're at almost 1,200 followers. If we get to 1,500, I have to wear fucking cleats to a Toronto Blue Jays game and a full uniform and two arm sleeves. I said 2,000 before. Fuck it. If we get 1,500, 
before June 9th, I will wear cleats and two arm sleeves to a Toronto Blue Jays game. And you guys are going to be there, obviously, with me. So it has to be a weekend game because JR is a suit. So he works. Uh, hey, it might be. We do have a date in mind. I am going to a Friday game. I am going to a, a Friday, Friday game. game would be great because, and listen here, we'll, we'll add something on top of it. So 1700 I will go out to the bar with you guys in a full, on a Friday night in a full <laughs> Toronto Blue Chase jersey. Yes. Would that not be the funniest video maybe ever? Like, just <laughs> who's this dickhead? Like, a guy in a full Blue Jays jersey at the bar. That would be incredible. <laughs> it's a, I, would, I can't even imagine, like, what people think. Like, <laughs> it's just so, like, I don't know how people would react to that. I don't either. I, I seriously don't either. I, I, yeah, I got literally no words for that. I just, I feel like, so they, I, I feel like one, I'd get made fun of. Oh, that's yes. just a given. Yeah. Two, it would just be kind of funny. Like the videos of like the looks of people like mm-hmm. me walking past like cleats and a full jersey. It's like, what the fuck is this dude doing? That would be funny. Um, yeah. And that's like, that's what we're going to do here. Like, that's what we're going to do. 1750. I will wear it to the bar after the game with Jaron and Avery and you guys. And maybe we'll tell the fans where we're at so people can kind of stop by and make fun of me and just take their jabs at me and stuff like that. So we'll do that. But any last words, JR, any last words, Avery? I mean, we're, we're, let, let's get it. Like, let's let's take two or three from the fucking White Sox. Why not? Yeah, I think it's it's got to be the goal. It's got to be the mindset. We can take two out of three here, and we're in a good spot now. I uh, just want to do a quick shout-out. VCU baseball, A-10 champs, going to regionals. I'll be in the States at some point this weekend. So we'll cheer for the Blue Jays and cheer for Canada's U.S. college baseball team, the VCU Rams. Go Rams. Wow. What an ending. Shout out VCU Rams. Shout out the Rams.